recording. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the February 2nd edition of our weekly community call for chaos. This is the first one of the month, so we try to sneak in um, updates from our working groups in this meeting. Um, hopefully we'll have time, but if not, we know we can power through and speed, speed update, um, like two minutes each, so we're good. Uh, we do have a lot on the agenda today because there's a lot going on, so um, let's hop right to it. The first one, uh, the first thing I wanted to just mention was, um, I just want to remind everyone that um, as you see, we have a mix of people with cameras on and cameras off, and that is absolutely fine. Like, do not feel obligated to turn your camera on at any time. We do not care. We still love you. We still want you to be a part of things. So absolutely, totally fine. Just wanted to reiterate that for anyone who was maybe feeling um, like they had to have it on or whatever. Like, just don't worry about it. It's not that kind of meeting. So um, it's totally up to you. Um, second one is we have now officially frozen the metrics. So we are starting our public community review period in the next few days, I would imagine. Um, once we, because Kevin, what, what has to happen is Kevin has to get them all onto the website, which I believe that he's done. Um, but we need to just make sure of that before we open the review period publicly. So um, if you are in a working group and you're working on metrics, um, that's just going to be on hold for a little bit, <laughs> for a little bit. Uh, so um, we want to give it, give people a chance to review what's currently out there, and we don't want to confuse the issues. So that's why we freeze the metrics right now. And then um, in March, uh, after we start this 30 day review, um, we'll have our official release in March, and then we can start all over again with brand new metrics or revising um, is something we've we've brought up from the past. Um, but that that 30 day uh, public review is where we invite uh, members of the chaos community or the general public who happens to have an interest in what we're doing um, to review the metrics, offer their suggestions or comments in the issues in GitHub, and then we will revise as needed. So um, there is work to be done in the working groups uh, based on any of those comments that come up during that review period. So. Um, does anybody have, I see people are adding, uh, Georg is adding some information there. The link uh, for anyone who's not looking at the minutes is uh, chaos.community slash metrics. And they will have a little tag on there, a little red label that says um, under review, I believe. So um, there we go. Does anyone have immediate questions or comments about that? Confused about the process, anything? The only comment is that you can jump in and provide feedback because we have the uh, continuous contribution process where we accept feedback the entire time from when we put it on the website to when it's um, going to be released. And I believe Kevin finished putting all of the metrics onto the website. So feel free to go there. The issues where we are asking for feedback on are linked on this page. So yeah, just go ahead, look through the metrics that have the tag under review. I, I, I'll point out too, just a quick scan. I think there's 15 metrics that are going to be part of this new metrics that are part of this release. That's a lot. <laughs> so, so that's awesome. And then this may bring up the thing that we've talked about in the past ways to filter the metrics so people can this is getting to be a pretty big list. You know, we've talked about this before, but. Yeah, I Doesn't agree. have to be We're... solved now, but. <laughs> we'll just whip that out real quick. It's no problem. Um, I was just going to say if we're keeping track somewhere of like a master to do list or like a main to do list that, we, you know, we kind of work from that would be on it is to kind of so solve this problem of how do we make these um, these metrics a little bit uh, easier to navigate for people who are looking. And we do, we have had some ideas. Uh, what would you all recommend as a best venue for that discussion? Would it be the web content meeting or would it be this meeting or? Probably web content now that you say it. Okay, so for anyone who's interested in being a part of that, who has um, experience or ideas on um, data presentation or how we can make these easy to to navigate and to search through and to find what you know a newcomer or an outsider might be looking for 
Um, those web content meetings are once a month and they are the first Monday of the month, I believe usually. So we just had one yesterday. So, haha, sorry, you gotta wait, <laughs> you gotta wait till the next one, but um, that's all right. We have enough to do anyway. So uh, we will uh, maybe put that on the, on the agenda for that meeting. Um, any other questions about this metric release? I see Kevin's on as well, so he can answer, I'm sure, anything specific with regard to logistics or operationally how we do this. If anybody has any questions, comments. Thanks, Kevin. <laughs> For Kevin is awesome. Keeping this in order. Yes, a ten thousand percent agree with that. Kevin gets ten gold stars for all his hard work at this in this like twice a year. I mean, he works hard all year long. I shouldn't say it like that, but uh, especially these this period and then in the fall again, it's Kevin's time to to shine, <laughs> and he gets the burden of it all. So thank you, Kevin. You're awesome. All right, so um, I guess we can just move on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the next thing on here is the Augur Hackathon. We are having our very first Augur Hackathon. Hooray, Virtually. Hooray. <clears throat> Virtually, of course. And that will be on February 13th. Um, there's the link to registration. I'm going to let Sean talk about it a little bit. Uh, I don't know if we've made that live yet. That's um, between me and Sean to sort out. Yeah. Um, Not yet. Okay. I don't, I haven't made it live. Have you made it live? It's ready to be made I, live, I think. I think we can make it live. Yeah. I'll make it live right now while you're All telling right. the, the All right. crowd. So we're going to focus, we're going to do um, our first hackathon focused on the time zones of North America and Europe. So it'll start at uh, 7 a.m. Central Time or 8 a.m. I think we said. I think it's 7, um, which will be uh, sometime later in the afternoon, like in the early afternoon in Europe. And uh, we'll go for five hours and uh, we'll begin with an overview of Augur for anybody that's familiar with that. So if you've got that already, you don't have to come for the first hour. And then we'll start focusing on the different issues in Augur and working together individually or in groups to uh, attack uh, different open issues in the Augur repository and basically learn how to operate, run, and to work with Augur uh, in the company of people who know it. So that's the whole pitch. Awesome. I'm excited. I don't know if I'll be there the whole time, but I no, will definitely be there. you don't have to be there at all if you don't want to be. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. Awesome. All right. <laughs> I don't know if you need help, like, you know, coordinating or facilitating. You probably. I probably need a lot of help. But... <laughs> um, so, yeah, so the site is live. If you have comments or questions, if something doesn't look clear, because Sean and I did this together. And so, like, we know what we wanted to say, but sometimes you know, it doesn't actually translate into something that's yeah. reasonable for other people. So um, yeah, just send send us comments. Uh, you can email me and I can put them on the site. It's no big deal. Or email Sean, either one of us. We'll, we'll make it happen. I'd be interested and, to see how much participation you get, especially with Google, some of code coming up and we start seeing people lurking around the community. So if we advertise this, we might get a nice following, a nice crowd. A good idea. Like even just to the list and to, yeah. to Twitter. We were going to do Twitter, to Twitter too. Yeah, for sure. And I'll put it in the newsletter because I know everyone is reading that newsletter from top to bottom. So I will absolutely put it a in A lot there of people are, week. yeah. <laughs> I used to um, do, just, just as an aside. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. It's it's okay. I just wanted to let you guys know that we're starting an open source calendar for IEEE SA Open, but it's not just for our events. We're doing all FOSS events. And um, so we're actually in the midst of putting everything in right now. So if you guys do have any more events like that, you know, feel free to let us know and we can get it up on our calendar. Emily, is there a form or something that we can fill out to send that to you? Uh, we have nothing formal right now, um, so I can just put my email in the chat and then you can send them over that way. Cool, thank you. And does it have to be, is it like limited by geography or can it be anywhere? No, or we're, we're not, not limiting it. Does this exist already, Emily? Is there a link you could share? 
Why don't um, yeah, you like send an email to the mailing list with so that the threats people can now follow up? Yeah, so them. right now we're literally trying to get all that, all of our stuff on there first. So um, I can't share the link to the, I can share the link to the calendar so you can see what's on there, but it's just our advisory group events. Um, and like I said, we're still kind of formulating what we want this calendar to look like. So unfortunately they have to <laughs> go through me right now. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll send that information. Cool, thanks. Mm -hmm. Definitely, thank you for including us. Appreciate that. All right, um, I think we can probably move on. Is that cool? Anybody else have questions about this hackathon or anything? Word up, we're moving on then. All right. Um, Advertising events. Oh, we just talked about that. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Review documentation, relocation, and consolidation efforts. Elizabeth and Matt S. Matt S. is not on here. Um, so here's the deal. We have a lot of documents, as you know, um, in the Chaos organization. So what we decided to do was create a, a Google Chaos account that we're going to try to put all of these Google Docs in. Um, what we're not sure is how each working group wants to handle this. Um, if we want each to have their own folder in that central account or just share it with us, like we, we're just not sure what y'all want to do. So um, we just thought we would bring the discussion here uh, to see what people think about how we should structure the folders, how we should set up that process of um, archiving minutes, for instance. That's kind of what drew, drew, uh, drove this whole thing. Um, so. You know, um, Matt also, Matt Snell was thinking to also put them on GitHub as markdown files, um, all the, the old minutes. So um, really, I just think we need to open it up and kind of figure out what we want to do. So what do you guys want to do? <laughs> well, Georg started with a comment in there about transferring ownership of like minutes or documents to chaos project. I mean, it's interesting. I couldn't even begin to remotely tell you how many people probably own the Google documents that comprise the work we've been doing in the project over all these years. No idea. I'm sure Don owns some, I'm sure I own some, I'm sure Georg owns some. Elizabeth, Sean, Vinod, <laughs> just everybody. <laughs> mm -hmm. <clears throat> so maybe we start with minutes. That might be the easiest thing. So can we see who owns, can you see who owns the document in Google Docs? So like who even owns this one? When you Me? go to share, it should say So, so me for this one. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So how do I go about transferring it to, I can figure it out. We don't need to do it here. You add, add the listserv and then once it's an official editor, then you can transfer ownership to the editor. Okay. Gotcha. So like right now I could in theory transfer ownership to Georg. Yeah. Cause he's an, he's an editor. Okay. Sorry, one more time, because I need to do the common one, because it looks like I own it. So we add the chaos mailing list. Is that what you said? Mm. Chaos yeah, so at gmail.com is the I'm assuming address. It's, that's an address that multiple people can access. OK. okay so can you drop that in the chat? Thanks. Okay, so each working group will take their minutes and add and add that Gmail address that the Chaos Project owns as a collaborator, and then it can transfer ownership. Um, what do we want to do about the archived minutes? Um, I, I'm not sure. I, I wish Matt Snell was here. He's not. But does anyone know what what the purpose of also doing them on GitHub was? The I. 
Oh, we notice here. Yeah, so the purpose was, uh, sorry, uh, to like a lot of people have very slow connection or it takes time to load the entire document when it gets bigger and bigger. So the issue was like, if we purge one year data and archive it so that when uh, anybody joins, they can e quickly load the document and start contributing to it. Also GitHub okay. is also GitHub is is more open. So it's not from an archive standpoint. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you, Benad and Kevin. Would we just archive it as a, like a giant PDF or something? Uh, I think they're archiving it as a basically they're archiving it by one year and they're archiving it as a markdown. So. Uh, it's it's fairly easy to convert uh, Google Docs into Markdown using some of the plugins that are out there. So that's my understanding is they're just converting one year's worth of uh, meetings into Markdown and moving it into GitHub. Okay. So logistically, it's not that hard. It's just one pull request for each archive for each, like for evolution, for this for value talking talking to matt prior he said it it doesn't take very long to do one so. i think we have some tests somewhere someone already did that i think john was also involved in that and one of the challenges was preserving the images that we had embedded because who dares to put images in a document uh, we don't have a ton of images in our uh, in our meeting notes or in the meetings. Uh, I know we we had that issue converting the uh, the metrics that were created in in Docs into Markdown to be released. Uh, Not anymore though, because we just write it in Markdown using the Doc, right? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so here's one more question about this. Um, when we go to create a new metric and we open a Google Doc, um, do we do we care about putting that in the centralized thing? Because it doesn't really live on past, you know, once it's released, then we don't really ever access that Google Doc again. But maybe just the templates? I would suggest we should uh, keep those templates in the central chaos repository because that contains the audit trail also, like who contributed, what portion, or what are the suggestions. Um, so in terms of like if a working group has a new metric that they start tomorrow, I don't see a real problem with like me just starting a Google Doc because to your point, it ultimately just leaves that Google Doc and moves into GitHub. Mm -hmm. And then it, it, during the review period, everything happens in GitHub and then it moves to the website. And then if changes need to be made, I think we would only go back as far as GitHub, not all the way back to the Google Doc. I don't think I've ever seen a situation where we go all like where metric has to go all the way back to the Google Doc. So then to your question, I don't think it matters. Perfect. I don't uh, think it matters either. To Vinod's point though, it, it does capture who commented on and who made notes on that metric when we created them. So I mean, we do lose we're losing that information when we when we move it into uh the, the GitHub markdown. Uh, I don't know if we need to keep it or not, but but that is information we're losing, like who who originally wrote the metric or who collaborated on the metric. Yeah, but we can even do that, like who, whoever creates it uh, onwards, once we are done, we can transfer the rights to the chaos and in this way we can keep a record of it. Yeah, I mean, it'll definitely prevent loss of info by the deletion of a Google account. 
So we don't ever report who authors an individual metric. We only report who has been an author in the overall like, collection of metrics. It's down yep. at the bottom of that metrics page. So that would be a, a suggestion to start tracking that, but I don't, we just haven't done that in the past. The question is, what do we want with that information? What do we do with it? The tracking who contributed to a particular metric information? Yeah, who contributed to a Google Doc. We haven't used the information in the past. What would we be using it for now? I would say that that's just generally best practice for working in the open. Uh, but you're, I mean, you're, you're right. There's probably nothing specific that we would, that we would use it for. Uh, but it does provide transparency to the work we're doing. We could always add a section to each of the metrics, like on the template that's underneath references that said contributors. And that would carry forward. It's, it's something we haven't done on any other metric, but if we wanted to capture that in some way, that would be an option. On a related note for the release, I am, it, it, the, the contributor list has gotten so large that it is difficult to maintain and figure out who has contributed uh, on the new release that was not there prior. Uh, so some way of capturing those new contributors would be nice. In the past, I've gone through meeting minutes and contribution logs. I can do that again, just for the last six months to see who is there and add them to the list. I, um, I, I don't know if it's uh, practical to um, recreate contributor um, logs for each metric in the past, and I think not, but um, I do think that it would have the advantage of helping contributors um, be recognized for what they worked on. Sort of that the, these last two topics um, have a surprising um, relevance to one another in that the contributor list is now very long for the project as a whole. Um, and uh, the per metrics um, contributor, would, um, contributor list would um, help ameliorate that problem. So Lucas, do you have thoughts on like, what would we want to track that in the metric itself? You know what I mean? Like the actual document metric or some other form of presenting that information? Um, I think that um, the, uh, the breaking it out in the contributor list um, would be uh, less distracting to people who whose main mission is to study the metrics. That said, each metric has a lot of real estate, right? Like a, we give it a full page, you give it a full page and there is plenty of room to breathe. And so um, it does seem to me that there is um, not too much to lose by putting it there. I think gathering the data is probably the harder point. Let me also say that as an as a newcomer, I don't want to distract from the ordinary business and flow here. I just hope that that information is valuable to the long term contributors. I actually think that you know, like if I think of how a metric is created in any of the working groups, you know what I mean, just through the calls and through the work in the Google Doc, it I don't think it would be very difficult to just kind of track who was on the call for that day because lots of times in the meeting we actually spend time working in the google doc and just transferring that information wouldn't be terribly difficult i don't think because we meet on a fairly regular cadence mm -hmm. and um, so I, I i like the idea i really like it too lucas um i think that's a great idea and you know, maybe this is something we could offer as a volunteer opportunity for someone to go back through all of the old Google Docs and pull that information out and maybe correlate it with 
you know, the meeting minutes or on, on that day. Um, what do you all think? Yes, it sounds tedious to go back through <laughs> and do it, but yes, it would be a good idea. There, there is the question on whether or not we can even find some of these Google Docs. I think some of them are uh, maybe maybe gone or hidden or lost. I, I know, actually, <laughs> in like like some of our working group meetings, like, are we working on this metric? And then somebody's like, oh my gosh, I found it, and then they post it in the chat. <laughs> You know, it's, it's been a grand total of like a month since we worked on it and <laughs> none of us can even find it. <laughs> Maybe we look and at our Excel sheet. Uh, so a lot of links are there. Maybe we can track from there. Yeah, that's a really good idea. And I love that this conversation has come full circle now. The, the We're realizing that, yeah, maybe we do need to have everything in one place. <laughs> um, Kevin, what were you going to say? Oh, I was just going to say for some of the older metrics, we might just put a put a call out for to people. You know, if you if you if you worked on a metric and want your name added to the author list, uh, let us know, <laughs> and we we could capture it that way. Uh, honestly, we could probably do that for all of them if we don't want to spend the time going through the records and finding out. Uh, uh, who is who. I don't think we'd capture a lot of people that way. People don't like to assign their names to open mm -hmm. source stuff that they don't feel like they 100% own. And I know from the conferences when we talk, worked on metrics collaboratively, not everyone in the Google Docs actually wanted to be mentioned as a contributor when we wanted to acknowledge their contributions. Maybe then it's something we just do going forward. That way we don't have to worry about getting consent for prior, but adding that in as part of the metrics release, just the confirmation of everyone who contributed to it. Um, and then, then we have the information to publish that going forward. And then you can opt in at that point. Plus, plus one to that. Yeah, I agree. That's a good idea. Yeah, that's an excellent point. Uh, as a, uh, as a, as a pilot, should we try to do that with the uh, metrics that we are releasing this cycle? I'd say yes, if it doesn't disrupt the process. Yeah, and we have 30 days. <laughs> to get it done. It does kind of raise an interesting question though, I guess for just context in the risk working group, we're talking about the bus factor and adding that to the official chaos metrics where it's not actually something that we came up with, it's something that's just been discussed prior oh. in the industry. So like, I'm not quite sure how we would attribute that metric outside of the risk working group decided that we all agree with this metric and have used it. So it should be part of our record as well. But I, like, I, I'm not sure how we would attribute something like- Good point. Metric people say this <laughs> yeah i mean yeah. i mean straight like we could say the same thing about like a lot of our first metrics like commits i mean we're not the first people that thought of that maybe, maybe we don't claim that we came up with the metric but we documented it yep okay so then maybe it's it's like contribution to it is just working through what becomes part of our record not claiming necessary ownership or original idea behind it Could put that I think all of that top, top of the section, like if we have a section under references, which is just contributors, we can say something to that effect. I agree. And bu bus factor was released too, Sophia, by the way. So it's oh, it, no, I it did got done. Let's go through. So. This is me ringing a bell. I don't, I don't know what else to do. <laughs>
Okay, let's go ahead and move on because we do have other stuff to talk about. Um, thank every, thank you everyone who contributed to that. That was an amazing conversation. I feel much better about where we stand with all of it. Um, and I'm sure that will continue to evolve, but yeah, I feel like we made good progress there. Um, so the next item on our agenda is to talk about the Google Summer of Code. Um, Georg and Sean and I have started the, um, the application. I don't think we've filled it yet because we're still working on uh, refining our answers to the application, but um, we need to uh, do a couple of things. First, we need to get some volunteers that would like to mentor. We need to kind of solidify that list. And then we also need to solidify our list of potential projects uh, for Augur and Grimoire Lab as well. So I don't know, Sean or, or Georg, if you want to um, talk about anything right now or... Georg created it and... Um... It's due February 19th, is it, I want to say? Yeah, it's coming up here in two yeah. weeks. Yep. The application so. itself, we have all the <clears throat> questions answered. So right now we are 100% on the platform, but we need to finalize mentors and project ideas. Yep. So in the past, we have had Augur and Grimoire Lab. But now with initiatives, maybe there are some automations, some ways that we can engage students in a 175 hour project mm -hmm. to help us advance in some way. It has so to the, be technical. So the, right. And so the, the projects we need to have defined by that deadline as well. Georg, is that right? Yes, we do. Okay. So um, I know Augur will propose one or two. I think we had some ideas um, at the community level as well for organizing some of our Augur community report stuff, was that going to be a Google Summer of Code project? Or I mean, our yes. chaos community report stuff? I was thinking for saying automating the same entire process. Mm -hmm. I can I can mentor for that. I think that'd be a great project. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, is the uh, plan to still do the micro task approach, Georg or Sean or Elizabeth? You know, where like there's the project yeah. and then there's the set of small tasks. Just to I have help. a, I haven't actually looked. I was, I'd assumed that they wouldn't change that, but Georg, did you see that? That was our then, call. We did yeah. that. It's not a requirement, so yeah. we can decide to do it or not, but it seems to have been helpful for filtering who really wanted to be a contributor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Agreed. And I think even some of the micro tasks could probably be repeated because mm -hmm. a lot of them are like install this, do that. Like they're not really necessarily assigned to the project itself, you know, like the nature of the project. So I think a lot of those micro tasks could be repeated. Do we have other thoughts on other areas that we could use help with? Thinking of, you know, where we want to be this time next year. Is there some something that could push us closer to those goals that we have maybe in our heads or we've spoken about in the past? One idea was what we talked about earlier with how do we present the metrics that could be a project to come up with the prototype. Another idea could be automating the metric release process. Agreed. <laughs> I think yeah. those would all be great. <laughs> Kevin, what do you think about those ideas? Do either of those? I mean, you don't have to, I don't mean to put you on the spot if you want to think about will you, it. Will you do it, Kevin, for sure? Commit now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think it would be, I think it would be interesting to, uh, to look at that. I, I, I probably would have to think about it a little bit more, uh, but, uh, but yeah, I think both of those things are, are possibilities. Are we planning to uh, refine the Chaos website as well? 
I'm sorry. Uh, we're we're. I mean, like, are we planning to uh, restructure, refine the uh, Chaos website as well? Like developing up the new version of it, or going so, to some other teams. Uh, during the during the migration, there are some tasks that we have identified that we want to put in place immediately, uh, and then through the uh, through the process of developing the proposal for the migration. Uh, and through uh, previous discussions and, and comments, we've we're also kind of assembling a uh, a secondary list of of changes to the website and restructuring that we would like to do after the after the migration has happened. Uh, so there there are any any number of tasks that could be uh, could be added to that phase at this point. Uh, so in answer to your question, yes, we are planning on. Uh, continuing to upgrade uh, and add new features to the website. And, and some of that may involve some, some restructuring. Okay, mm -hmm. maybe we could add this as well. Maybe adding up some of the uh, micro task of like just refining or upgrading the website, uh, like what more features we can input or like all these type of things we can add up as a one idea and then we can go with it if everyone agrees. With it. So Kevin, if you, to Josh Curran's point, if you are interested in this in Vinod too, like on whether it's the community report stuff or if it's automating like the release, um, I'd be happy to also mentor in that space, you know, or new features to the website. Maybe we could think about how one proposal could maybe touch on a few of these. Additionally, I've been wanting to do uh, a diversity and inclusion audit of the website, uh, an accessibility audit of the website, and uh, and a marketing audit of the website. So those those yeah, are tasks that could provide uh, direction for future improvement. Uh, I wouldn't see those. You're not suggesting those are Google Summer of Code projects, though, are you? Because those are not really technical enough. I don't think. No, no, I don't think they're technical enough. They might be good for outreachy, though. Yes, I think so. So, with, without committing, yes, I, I I agree that all of these things are good ideas. Uh, I think I need to kind of think about what those tasks would entail. Mm -hmm. uh, so I will, uh, I will put that on my action item list to, uh, to think about that for the next meeting. Sounds good. Thank you, Kevin. Okay. Let's go ahead and move on. I think we have some, a good start here. Um, and if people want to take the next week and kind of think about other things we might, we might touch on, um, next week. That would be great. Um, so we have about nine minutes. Okay, so just wanted to mention really quick, the next thing is the volunteer opportunity of the week. So we want to get our um, file names and folders standardized across working groups because um, they're kind of like a mishmash right now and it's a little bit confusing, um, especially for newcomers to try to navigate all of it. Um, so Georg had this idea of um, getting some help with um, just renaming some things so um, if you know anybody who needs practice or would like to kind of um, get a little bit more experience uh, using Git and GitHub in that way, um, I think that would be a great opportunity and it wouldn't take forever. You know, it's like a one-time thing, one and done. So, um, and then moving forward, we can, we can you know, obviously have it, have it all set. So um, we are estimating about one hour per working group to go through and kind of rename everything. And, and Georg has documented quite a lot of um, the the thought process of how we're going to move forward so and how to how to do all of that so it's all it's should be pretty uh pretty simple i think but it might be kind of tedious it'd be all, all so um but if you know anybody who wants more experience doing any of that or has a little bit of extra time can help us with that that'd be awesome send them either my way or to georg either one 
Out of curiosity, what is the standard naming format that we have landed on after all this time? We don't just have one decided. I made a proposal. <laughs> it's need to know basis, Kevin. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I put uh, the yes, I should have clarified that it was just a proposal. I should have is clarified. The, oh, sorry. Oh, okay. Is the is the proposal lower place with dashes? That's what I like. Due to this naming convention, one of the pull requests is still pending for the merge. Value working group. Yeah. There. Yeah. Lowercase dashes. There you go. Plus one. Let's get it done. So yes, if this is something that you uh, are interested in being a part of, um, Georg do, did drop a link to his proposal um, in the minutes, so check that out. And you can follow up with, with him on that. Um, someone sneakily added something to the Me, agenda, I'm fast. guessing. <laughs> so we have the translation repository, and I quickly realized that uh, pull requests that were coming in in Chinese were not something that I could really Make have any well. comment on, do well with. So um, we've added <laughs> King and Shoya as maintainers of that repository as well. And so they can obviously um, provide better feedback. And it's really, the conversations are really interesting. Already there's a, a conversation around how to define an issue like what does issue even mean in chinese um and then the cascading effects <laughs> as to, to how to represent that because right now the the question is whether or not it's even represented correctly in in one metric and if if it's not then that would obviously have implications so it's just it's really interesting um, to kind of watch the issue so i just a big thank you to to shoya and king for offering their help there. Uh, Matt G, quick question about the Spanish translations. Do we need to assemble a team of volunteers that would uh, just look over the revisions as we have for the, Prob the Chinese? Probably, ones? yeah, because I don't speak Spanish either. Oh, so. Should we bring that up at the Asia Pacific community call next time? Yeah. Um, Daniel has alluded to perhaps be willing to help. <laughs> That's so definite. He's alluded to perhaps. Well, I don't want to like put, I might be recorded. Perhaps, I just don't want to uh, say, uh... I don't want to commit anybody to anything yeah, without them being like here. I don't like speaking on behalf of other people. It's just a, yeah, a yeah, thing. Yeah, I get you. <laughs> Um, okay, so we'll just we'll check in with Daniel and just see how he feels about that. And then um, if anyone else is fluent in Spanish and would like to participate in that, let me know and I'll add you to a, where we'll create a team on GitHub. And then whenever we have revisions to the metrics, uh, if you want to be a part of just looking over those and making sure that they make sense, because um, we are not going to have those professionally translated. So if you can help us with that it would be great. Oh geez, we have four minutes, and we have a lot of um, a, a lot of working group updates. So uh, uh, let's just do this. If you're on a working group that has a major update, um, for instance, the risk because meetings were moving. Risk group, um, we're pivoting towards dependencies, kind of hard right now, and um, uh, our meeting time is now two p.m. on two p.m. on Thursdays. We moved. Perfect. Uh, that's it. Evolution, nothing new other than what we released. Just our metrics. Same okay. bad time, same bad channel for the meeting. And they're not weekly anymore. They're back to the bi-weekly cadence yeah. Yeah, for evolution. They, correct. So the next one is whenever it is. Um, I think it's this week or next week. Uh, must be what about week. common? Oh, what about common? Anything new besides the metrics that we crushed last, last time? Mm -hmm. We didn't have a meeting last week, so I think we gave the update in the previous weekly update. There's, but there's a meeting on Thursday, this Thursday. Awesome. Uh, diversity and inclusion. 
just the metrics. There's already been a comment on one of them and a PR that I think has gone in for the review period. Thank you, Gayer. System is working. Yep. I think um, Matt Snell, I just caught the tail end of the um, outreach uh, badging meeting, but <clears throat> Emily and Nicole were there. I think Beth was there as well. Um, I believe we have another application for a badge. So that's exciting. Is that right? We do. There is. Yeah. When did it come in? Oh, I'd have to look at it. Uh, but we found out about, or actually, uh, it was announced in uh, this morning's meeting. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got some good outreach. We've got uh, things coming in. Things are moving there, which is exciting. Um, the only uh, that is very exciting. I'm excited. Um, the only other thing that we might want to mention in the that about that working group is we're talking about changing it from diversity and inclusion to diversity, equity, and inclusion, since that seems to be a little more, um, uh, what's the word I want? Just kind of staying up with like how the general movement is going um, to, to recognize that that's another piece of it. So um, if you have thoughts on that, uh, feel free to join that, that group. I believe they're meeting this week obviously. And so hop in on that call if you have strong feelings about that. Um, and then I think the only other update for is value. We have a new facilitator, Vinod. Thank you very much for stepping in because Matt B had to step away for uh, career um, obligations. Um, so Vinod has joined as the new facilitator. So hooray. Yeah. Thank you, Vinod. Yeah. Thank you. And just a note, we are planning to move a meeting one hour ahead or like a letter maybe. Uh, so I'm sending the email and figuring it out. So it'll be either one hour earlier or one hour later or, or the alternative weeks. So I'll send out the email and we'll confirm what is the best option and then we'll finalize it. Fantastic. So stay tuned for updates on that day and time of those meetings. And one more thing, uh, I've created a pull request for a metric to be added. I haven't added in this list because the pull request was not merged as yet. So wanted to check if it is possible to merge and add it in this release because I, I created a Georg, pull request. Georg just merged it. So if you create okay. the issue, I will pull it into the release. Okay, wonderful. I'll do that then. So we unfroze those just for you, Vinod. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm obliged. OK, we're at time. We did it. We made it through all of this stuff. Awesome yes. job, everyone. Now you can take the rest of the day off. Yeah. No. <laughs> all right, we'll right. see you next Thanks. time. Everybody have a great rest of your day. Bye, Thank everyone. You. Bye. <laughs>